we're still waiting for other guests to arrive, but we cannot wait. We're going to start the program. Our students are from from where? Okay. Just you can hear me. 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 Just you This afternoon, 
We launched the love letters of President and Peter Quirino. I am confident that we do this not to show or boast of how articulate and melodic the President was. We commence this activity to relieve the memory and wisdom of Apo Pijon. 120 years ago, Dr. Jose Rizal was executed, but his ideals remain to be relevant until this day and beyond. Just like Rizal, Apo Pijon's bright ideas continue to be significant and appropriate during this time. As we publicize the love letters of President Quirino, we inspire the present generation with applicable insights that may be used to respond to the call of time. Moreover, we preserve Apopidio's beautiful mind for the benefit of the future generation. Thus I command Familia Quirino for always sharing with us and the society the prominence of the great son of the Lotusur. Congratulations, Tori and Nelly and the Quirino Foundation, Just Yagina. Thank you, Mario. Meron akong explanation kung bakit walang pangalan ni Manny Jerry dito kasi he's like a jet setter. <laughs> I'm so happy you accepted the invitation, Manny Jerry. You know that you are family. You will always be family. You're showing in the family tree where it all began. And now, next person to, uh, to uh, deliver a special message for both the Sikia and the Quirino families Please welcome my esteemed brother, who's been here for 18 years. Mas pangalay sa akin siya, Eddie Quirino. Good afternoon, everybody. Distinguished guests, Anon, Engineer, Bella, Dr. Jerry, Mario, and dear friends. This speech was prepared for me by my cousin Ruby, Filino Gonzalez, uh, who is uh, one of the uh, officials of the Filino Foundation. Uh, the vision of the heirs of Gregorio Sequia for the mansion is to ascertain the continued relevance of the Sequia mansion to the vegan community, the Ilocos region, and the rest of the country. We also aim to preserve the mansion in perpetuity as a priceless legacy for future family members, the vegan community, the Ilocos region, and the rest of the country. In order to do this, we, the heirs of Gregorio Sequia, are one and united in striving to maintain the mansion in the state closest to its original architecture and interior design. In partnership with the LGUs and historical and cultural authorities in both government and private sector, we aim to and will restore the original architecture and structural foundation of the mansion. We have started groundwork for plans to curate, restore, and conserve the artifacts and memorabilia of the mansion. We have also professionalized and improved the guided tours in the coming weeks and months, starting with today's exhibit and talk. We will conduct workshops, seminars, lectures, performances and other activities that will contribute to its function as a living museum. Another area in the person of Carla Mendoza Pazis will be responsible for these efforts. She has committed to settling vegan permanently in order to support this endeavor after her retirement as a professor in De La Salle University this coming April. These are exciting times indeed for both the heirs and the mansion and These are exciting times. Uh, and we hope the city of Vigan and the province of Ilocosur will gladly welcome and support these efforts. To jumpstart these activities, we are launching our first exhibit 
Elpidio and Alicia, The Love Letters. To quote from the book's foreword, the exchange of love letters between Elpidio and Alicia gives us a picture of the life of Filipinos during the American period of our history. A time of learning and preparation for eventual independence, we are brought back to a more genteel, more peaceful Manila. Personally, it has given me a glimpse of my Lola Elpidio's and Lola Alicia's courtship. Considering they were already married then, it warmed my heart to realize that my Lolo and Lola enduring love for each other has withstood the trial of fire and wind that so many marriages go through. It is unfortunate that my Lola Alicia did not live to see the ultimate fruit of their conjugal struggle. But happy to realize that the same enduring love life lives on in us, their descendants, and will hopefully live on for generations to come. I will go no further and leave it up to our guest speaker to introduce us to this wonderful exchange of love letters between Alpidio and Paula Alicia, a distinguished writer and scholar, a proud son of Ilocandia, a person who needs no introduction, a friend of the family, and I must say, a true blood Kirinista. On behalf of the heirs of Gregorio Sequia and the heirs of President Alpidio Quirino, I have the honor of introducing Rene Guatlo, author of Alpidio and Alicia, The Love Letters. Mr. Guatlo. Ngayon magamalim, kaya tayo aming kaibigan sa panahon ng mga Rene, pinagal ko na yan ang kapit ko yung Ilocos Norte, nagbasa at Manila, yan sa Balipay ng Pasel. Ngayon, nagsubli ako yung 2007, nga yan ito yung Ilocos as tourism officer of the province of Ilocos Norte. I first met the Kirino family in 2010 when we celebrated the 120th birthday of the former president. Um, the year after that was the Panag Subli when the Kirino family and all the five, uh, I think, is it five or seven branches? The remaining branches of the Kirino brothers and sisters, their descendants, came to Vigan to celebrate their ties to this city. We show the power of the group. I was introduced to President Quirino at that time, and uh, in 2014, when we were beginning the preparations for the 125th birth anniversary, uh, I was called by Cory, Eddie, Rudy, and uh, we talked about how to reintroduce this proud son of Ilocania, the first Apo, the first Ilocano president. And one of the things that was mentioned to me is that there existed this maybe 40, 50 love letters, but we included only perhaps half of those letters in this uh, book of love letters. Um, for those who are not too familiar with their story, of course, Alicia Sequia was the eldest son of Gregorio. Sikia uh, and uh, oh, Tomas Sikia and uh, she was of course the darling of both the father and the mother uh, and she was only like perhaps 16 when the then 29 or 30 year old Elpidio Quirino had a glimpse of her and of course no mamuyo na ako video talaga na um, interesting, interesante ni Storiana. Nayanak iti pagbalutan. I think the only president born in jail, the other part going to jail after serving the term is a bit more common. But the young people especially, niya po pili yung basit pailain talaga na at the uh, he had a dream, he had a big dream. He wanted to help this country become an independent country. Remember, he was born in 1890. So the first 
seven, eight years of his life was directly under Spanish rule. The next two, the Philippine American War. He finished elementary is during the American period. Then he went to high school. While in high school, he taught in his own barangay, Kaparayaan, which is now part of Hawaiian. At basbasa iti high school, at saka da kayo, mangisursuro kada iti elementary. Tapos na ang masapulan na. The story is told that when Tang came to pay his salary, they were looking for his cedula. I think he was 14, 15, or 16 years old. No cedula. He was not an adult. Until finally the American in charge of local education here said, if he's old enough to teach, he's old enough to receive a salary. But why was he working? Of course, they were not a wealthy family. He was working because he had a dream. He wanted to build a country, and he decided, in order to build a country, I have to become a lawyer. In order to become a lawyer, I have to go to the best school, and that was UP at the time. In order to get into UP, I must go into the best high school. And Vegan High School was a good high school, but he decided, I want to go and study, finish high school in Manila. So he finished high school in Manila South, joined the law uh, faculty of UP, and graduated among the second batch. He was also a bar top notcher. He placed second in the bar of 1915, together with another future president, Jose P. Laurel. So they were, from that time of high school college, they were already friendly and fabulous. Anyway, so going back to this letter, these letters were discovered in Baguio by one of the grandsons of the former president. And if we look at this, next slide please. Next slide. This is how the book looks like. And this is the cover of the book. It's an artwork by an artist friend of mine, John Santos. Uh, also made for friends who were partners at that time. Um, it shows the man talking through a, a, a headphone, handphone, all the way to the girl. I thought that it was an appropriate artwork for this. Next slide, please. And this is what they look young. Uh, she was probably 16 at this time, uh, and he was around 16 also at that time. Uh, we have a lot of pictures of Doña Alicia, very precious few of the young El Pidio. So he's the only picture that we know of him. Perhaps he had just graduated from high school. The important thing to note is that they wrote each other in Spanish. She was a native, well, she was practically a native speaker because there was the lingua franca in their family, the mother being of Spanish blood. But El Pidio was not a Spaniard. He did not have, he was not a mestizo, but he learned it because he knew that in order to communicate to clients and to the society that he aspired to be part of, he had to speak in Spanish. Um, the background shows you uh, a little bit of the handwriting. Take the next slide, please. Why did they get married? It was in this house, there was a party on the second floor, and that evening, suddenly the lights went off. Of course, everybody was quiet, and moments later when the lights came on, Alicia was being in the protective embrace of El Pidio. And so at the time, the norms being, kung meron ng ganyan, naghawakan na kayo ng kamay, magpapakasal na kayo. <laughs> so he was 30, she was 17. And there's a more than 12 year gap between them. And so it was like, um, he was like a mentor to the young Alicia, the very intelligent Mano to the very carefree and very wealthy Alicia. He taught him a lot about patience, about loving, 
about not spoiling the children. Uh, and in turn, Alicia provided moral support, the love that nurtured, and also the family provided the means for him to pursue a very strong political career. He became congressman of the first district of Ilocos Sur with a term of six years. And then later on, he was elected a senator for, I think it was the senatorial region one, which included everything in what is now regions one and two. So Ilocos Norte, Sur, La Union, Pangasinan, Cagayan, Isabela, all that entire area he was representing for the Senate. Next slide, please. This is them as newlyweds. Um, if you will notice, uh, in all of his public life, and I think even in private, El Pito Quirino was a nappy dresser. He was never seen without the proper baron or white suit. And she likewise was a lady of fashion. I think this was taken in Baguio somewhere. Next slide, please. This is them with their firstborn, your father, Tomas. Um, he always cautioned her because he was pursuing his political and legal career in Manila. She stayed on in Vigan, in this mansion, because she had to be with her mama. She had to be with her family. And it was the Lola and Mama Alicia who brought up Tommy and most of the Quirino children. Next slide, please. This is what the letters look like, no? Very clean handwriting. And many of you now do not know what letters are, no? because what you have is email, instantaneous mail. This is what snail mail looks like. You write a letter with a pen, make sure it is legible, then you put it in an envelope, write the address, and attach these strange pieces of paper for stamps. No? Okay? And my personal, because I enjoy writing, my personal mission is to encourage more and more people to write letters, send a birthday card, send a birthday letter, send a Christmas and a New Year greeting in an envelope. We have President Elpido Quirino stamps that were issued for his 125th birthday. I hope you make full use of them. I hope that the store, the future store here, will be selling both envelopes, paper, and the stamps. And we are encouraging the vegan city post office to put up a sub-office here and stamp all those letters, Sikia Mansion in Vegan. Okay. So I hope you will try to write a letter, write a line or two, kahit na wish you were here, lang. Next slide, please. This is the family picture in the, perhaps in the mid-30s, no? because the youngest, baby Fed, was not yet born. You have uh, all four, Tomas on the right, I think that's Dodi on the left, and then beside the president is Norma, and then Victoria beside Mama Alicia. The fifth, Fed, as I said, was not yet born. And uh, this boy on the left, this girl beside the president, and their baby sister all died during the liberation of Manila. It was the eldest, Tomas, the father of Cory and Eddie, and their other siblings and Victoria, the mother of Rudy and her siblings, who survived. And they helped out all the way through the Quirino presidency later. Next slide, please. This is where we are. It's a historic building. Um, it was built in 1830. So in 13 years, it will be a 200-year-old heritage house. And that's why the heirs of Gregorio City have seen it fit to refurbish, to make it a truly 
heritage, living heritage landmark of Bigan, representing the best that this old city, this loyal city, has to be proud of. These are the ancestors of the Sikiyas. We have Vicente Sikia, Sikia, and his wife Petronila Incarnacion, sing song. That is the link, I think, to your family vice governor. They established, they got married, uh, and they had a son named, next week, Gregorio. Gregorio married Estefania Anko. And it is the Anko family which built this original structure and they gave it as a dowry. In those times, uh, you will not get married if you do not have a sufficient dowry. Uh, so Gregorio and Estefania got married. He received many, many um, medals. One of them being the medal of Isabella La Catolica. We have the medal, but we do not have the document. And uh, so we're still trying to find out exactly when this medal was given. But certainly he was a distinguished gentleman of Vigan, uh, a trader, a businessman. And in that marriage, they had uh, Tomas, the son Tomas, uh, Anko Sikia, who married a mestiza from Pandesinan, Concepcion Jimenez Sikia. I think it was around this time that Sikia became Sikia because now you have a Spanish lady uh, as part of the family. It is this couple who had, I think it was seven or eight children, five of whom survived. It was eight children. Of these, um, the, I think Estefani Jimenez Siquia, number six there, was having uh, probably died as an infant. And then Margarita Jimenez Siquia, um, Alicia Siquia, and this one. There were three or four who died during the liberation of Manila, um, together with their mother, their Jimenez Siquia mother. But of these, there are five who survived. There, I mean, five of these children have uh, descendants. And they are the five diamonds on top of the Sikia S that we find in the Sikia Mansion logo. Next slide. This is showing you how Alicia supported the career of her husband, personally joining his political sorties, and of course, the Sikia family provided the finances that enabled him to campaign and win. In fact, uh, I, was, I was telling the uh, interviewer at Channel 2 at ABS-CBN earlier, uh, his was a stellar career. He started as teacher in the bar, assistant to Keson, congressman, senator, member of the Commonwealth Cabinet, eventually President Potem of the Senate, Vice President, President. Um, I don't think there was, except for the period of the war, there was really no lull in that uh, political career. Next, please. He, he, it's just an explanation of what love letters are, but it shows you, as again I said, that's why I encourage you, when you write a letter, it's your handwriting, it's your thoughts on the paper that are sent. And when somebody opens that letter, it's as if they are in your presence. It is not instantaneous, but at the same time, it is very personal. Yeah. Just a few more of those examples of letters. And this is how letters were, how snail mail was delivered. And they put them on a locomotive, put them on a train, and had them brought out from wherever you post it and wherever it's going. The next one is sometimes it's the caretella that we There was once a job called cartero. The cartero is the guy who brings you the mail. Wala na silang trabaho ngayon. 
Next. And these are the various modes of transport. This is what Manila looked like during before and during the Commonwealth years. It was one of the most beautiful cities in the Far East. Truly worthy of the name Pearl of the Orient. Next. Um, it's just that they never went to Japan together. He went to Japan. I don't know if she went, but this was not taken in Japan. This was taken in a studio. Okay. Um, again, before, now you take selfies. You take 10,000 pictures in one week. But before, you had to go to something called a studio. You'll be facing a camera that's probably as big as a television. And then you have to sit still for like maybe a minute, two. Maybe during their time, it was less than a minute. That's why they're able to smile. Their grandparents could not smile because you cannot smile for three minutes. Mga <laughs> nalaika. But in their case, they were able to do it. It just happened that they were wearing Japanese yukatas or kimonos. But it apparently was a fashion during the time of the Commonwealth. Next, please. This is them again. Uh, the picture on top shows them in one of the peace missions. And this is probably a more formal portrait of the couple. Because while he was a um, senator and member of the Commonwealth cabinet, he also went with Quezon on missions for independence to Washington. Next please. So this is the book, as I said, um, in order to go with our theme of letters. You know, letters before were very formal. Now you only do it for wedding invitations. You would put it the envelope with an envelope, then you have wax. And it would be sealed with so there's a S, E, and A, and P, T, O, N, and it's a wax seal. That's why when you receive a letter then, it was an occasion. You have to break the seal, and then open it, so that you can see what's inside. And this is the book inside the envelope. And then what you've done is we put together those letters in their English translation and we would have several, yet several that were done in calligraphy and we have actual envelopes and the letter inside so that it's like opening your own, if only it would, I think we were really made to have two hands doing one thing and not the other. There you go. It's in calligraphy. It showed you what the letter was. This is one of the few letters from Alicia. And it says, I am very happy to know that you are all well and content in my absence. I was not going to write you anymore because we have been expecting you every day. You can see that there's a little tampo in the letter. But then she proceeds, most of her letters like this, El Pidio, please get from Paing the funds from the sale of my baboy and buy a dozen emulsified shampoo to wash hair. This is by Watson and available at Botica and Son. Another request, one queso de bola and a celluloid toy for Tommy. These are sold by the Japanese. All these toys are broken. Please send the dresses to Marcelo. Tommy can now crawl. He crawls backwards and away from his man. We, he has not forgotten to say Papa, but if you delay much longer, he could forget. <laughs> he sends you a thousand kisses. You receive a kiss from your wife, Alicia. P.S. Please ask what the offer is for the jewelry I sent to sell. Don't forget to bring my white satin shoes. Try to return as soon as possible and bring our good little friend. So, there's a little hello, there's a kiss from the wife, but it's actually five or six things to do. <laughs> Get the proceeds from the sale of my baboy, buy shampoo, buy this, buy that, queso de bola, toys, satin shoes and dresses, and have you sold the jewelry I sent? 
So that's Jamie Apple and Lisa. She was a she's the daughter of a Chinese tradesman. She was a businesswoman. She even sold a bell in the carnivals of uh, Manila carnivals of the 1920s. He would send in a bell from Ilocos. And I wish we had bought them because it was like 30 centavos for a plant. Yeah. <laughs> one peso for a whole matrimonial set and things like that. But this is how this couple lived their life. It was an exchange of concerns about the teething of the children, how not to spoil them, where to build a house, how it should be modest. There's a letter where he says, I'm comparing cement A, B, and C. Cement C is the cheapest, I think that is what we should have. And then he said, it is important for a politician to live a modest life, to live in a modest home. And so he was telling his wife, Alicia, I am sorry, I was born poor, and now I'm a politician. We have to live beneath your means. She, she can live anywhere she wants. In fact, if you recall, there are how many Sikia apartments in all of Malate? Huge buildings uh, that went to another branch of the family, but. The branch of Alicia certainly had quite a bit of property as well. Abu Pidyong had only one, the house that he built in, in Quezon City, in Novaliches, the house that he moved into after he left Malacanang. So this book is the result of efforts by many friends. Um, next slide, please. The artwork, as I said, is from my close friend. And it's a it's our desire for you to see not only the official side, the political side of Abu Tidyong, but the very personal side. Imagine you are the katugangan of you are the in-law from a poor family, Manugang, coming from a poor family to probably at the time the richest family in all of Vigan among a few others and how he he made uh, his political life as clean and noble as possible despite whatever obstacles there were. Next slide please. As a result of his long distinguished career, he was forgotten for a while but Almost as part of the 125th birth anniversary, when uh, the family met with former President Ramos, and he asked, where is the president buried? And they said, South Cemetery. Why? Because there was no living in Amuna Bayani in 1956. And so he suggested that the president be buried in the corner lot right beside the proposed site of FBR's future um, burial ground. He said he wanted to be neighbors with somebody he likes. And so on the 29th of February last year, in the presence of former President Ramos, President Aquino, and of course the members of the Quirino family and their friends, I don't know if you can see here Mrs. Nini Quezon Avancena. She is now in a wheelchair, but for this ceremony, she walked behind the bier of President Quirino. President Quirino was a protege of her father, the former President Manuel Quezon. So it was a fitting tribute to a president from this part of the country who served his country well. And the other part of, and there was another set of letters that I was shown when I was shown the love letters. It's the letters from all sorts of Japanese, especially from one artist, talking about sending home the remaining prisoners of war in the 1950s. He did. Before, during the presidential elections of 1953, he sent home more than 100 prisoners of war who were imprisoned in Montindupa. And he said, quite famously, it's no longer time to hate. We must, we do not forget, but we do not hate. And so, when the official dam of Japan found out about this move, 
of giving executive clemency to their prisoners of war, the people and government of Japan decided that it was fit to put up a Kirino memorial, what you see on the left side, dedicated to the memory of the former president for his Christian and generous act of forgiveness. We see here the members of the Kirino family together with uh, Japanese officials. There. The gentleman second from the right is the deputy uh, head, the second highest person in the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, and of course a strong supporter of Prime Minister Abe. This memorial is in Hibiya Park. It's probably about 500 meters away from the Imperial Palace. It's one of the former Imperial Gardens. And it's right in front of Hibiya Kokaito. It's a big meeting place where, when the prisoners of war arrived in Japan in 1953, July, they had a big gathering inside the hall, Hibiya Hall, to thank the government of the Philippines and the president, El Pidu Quirino, for his act of forgiveness. Next, this was done in June 2016. A few months later, in another part of Japan, in Shimane, a town called Yasugi, this memorial was also unveiled. It shows President Kirino in a wheelchair during his visit to Japan in 1955 and his meeting with a painter called Kanrai Kano, who wrote more than 40 petitions addressed to the President, beseeching him to forgive and to send home the prisoners of war. There was a personal reason for this. He was mayor of a small town, and a few of his constituents were among those who were incarcerated in Mubinduka. The family has since put up, the Kano family has since put up a museum, and in front of that museum, they put up this memorial. And in its unveiling in November, members of the Kirino family uh, represent, especially Attorney Lila and Eddie, were there to witness this occasion. And I am told by Mrs. Kano, the daughter, that this year they will be gathering the high school teachers of Japan in Shimane and she will be talking about this act of forgiveness that opened this relationship of friendship with Japan, the 60th anniversary of which we celebrated in July last year. Next. And to celebrate, um, to celebrate this um, occasion, the 60th anniversary, in January of last year, towards the end, for about a week, the Emperor and Empress of Japan were in Manila as state visitors. This uh, is a picture from the New Year celebrations in Tokyo at the Palace. And what is noteworthy is that, next slide please, the poem, this poem, was written by Her Majesty the Empress to mark the new year, 2017. And she said, The one who forgave the unforgivable, along with his name, I etched in my heart the name Munting Luka. A tribute made more memorable by the fact that he did not she did not cite him by name, but he was referring to the name Kirino and the place Muntizupa, where I think our war ended and our friendship with Japan began. Next. So this is El Pito Kirino. One last note, Alicia is a not too uncommon name, but probably not too common now. It means noble, and it's very fitting for Alicia Sikia coming from this noble house. Elpidio, the only Elpidios that I know are members or descendants of the Elpidio Quirino family, and perhaps a few uh, who were contemporaries, named, you know, who were born in the 50s and were named after him. We do not know it's Woodward too much, but actually it comes from the Greek Elpis. If you're familiar with Pandora's box, when she opened the box, illness, strife, war, 
jealousy. All of these negative things came out and bit her everywhere. And bit her. All sorts of wounds. So she closed it, but every, every man had gone out. And then there was a small voice inside that said, let me out. And so she decided, well, everyone has gone out, I might as well. And out came something like a dragonfly. And this dragonfly kissed the wounds of Pandora and healed them. That dragonfly's name is Elpis. It is hope in Greek. So it's very fitting that at the end of a violent war, at the time when our economy was in ruins, this man became president of the Philippines, giving hope, giving courage to a new republic. So I hope you will continue to remember El Pidio, both the president and the man. There are many lessons to be learned from his life. There are many lessons to be learned from his love letters. Pleasant afternoon. Thank you very much, Lynette. Let's give Lynette a big round of applause. This has been a work of love for him, a work of passion and love for him and for the family. And thank you, Lynette, for being not just a Kirinista, but for being a member of the Kirino family as well. We have already officially adopted you. <laughs> so with that, we're going to end uh, our program. If you have, but if you have questions for the uh, editor of the book, Lynette, uh, please raise your hands, we will be happy to answer your questions. Anything about the book or our plans for the Sikia Mansion? Okay, before we start, Marianne, I would like to announce that the uh, editor, and he wants to be first to be called the editor of the book, is ready to. Uh, sign the books, autograph the books for those who like to buy the books and give them as souvenirs, mementos to your special friends and family. But uh, we'd like also to turn over our very special souvenirs to uh, Monsignor Avila, to uh, Manok Jerry Simpson, and um, to Judge Ante, who's here. We'd like to, uh, in behalf of the Quirino and Sikia families, we'd like to give you a souvenir of the book. I'll you and Alicia, the doctor.